नमस्कार हाउ आर यू होप यू आर फाइन एंड टेकिंग गुड केयर ऑफ योर सेल्स टूडे इन दिस सेशन वी शेल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द फर्स्ट लेसन ऑफ योर जोग्राफी बुक रिसोर्स एंड डेवलपमेंट इन द प्रीवियस सेशन ऑफ दिस लेसन वी टॉक्ट अबाउट वॉट आर रिसोर्स क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ रिसोर्स सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट रिसोर्स प्लानिंग एंड रिसोर्स कंजर्वेशन इन कॉन्टिन्यूएशन टू वॉट वी हैव ऑलरेडी डन टूडे वी विल टॉक अबाउट लैंड एंड सॉइल रिसोर्स लैंड एज यू ऑल नो इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रिसोर्स फॉर अस ऑल इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज आर कैरीड आउट ऑन लैंड बीट एग्रीकल्चर और कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ हाउसेज buildings industries roads railway lines hospitals each and every activity is carried out on land land is also a storehouse of groundwater minerals and fossil fuels our 95% of basic needs are obtained from land land resources refer to all those resources which are found on land that is natural vegetation wildlife human life economic activities transport and communication system however land is an asset of a finite magnitude therefore it is important to use the available land for various purposes with careful planning india has land under a variety of relief features namely mountains plateaus plains and islands this diagram represents the land under important relief features about 43% of the land area is plain 30% of the total land surface area is under mountains and 27% area is under plateaus land utilization two pie diagrams are being shown on the tv screen these pie diagrams are reflecting the general land use categories for the year 1960-61 and 2014-15 The source of this diagram is Directorate of Economics and Statistics Ministry of Agriculture 2017 If you see you will find that the land has been used for the following purposes forests barren and unculturable wasteland it includes the land which is either not fit for cultivation or the land that has been put to non agricultural uses for example buildings roads factories etc then you can see in the diagram that there is area under non agricultural uses permanent pastures and grazing land area under tree crops and groves culturable waste land fallow land is of two types that is current fallow and the other than current fallow current fallow is that land which is left without cultivation for one or less than one agricultural year other than current fallow is that land which is left uncultivated for the past 1 to 5 agricultural years then comes net sown area what is net sown area it is the total area that is sown with crops and orchards it represents an area on which crops are grown only once in a year and if 
we add the net zone area in the area zone more than once in an agricultural year it is called gross cropped area looking at these pie charts you have to answer the following questions compare and find out why the net zone area and the land under forests have changed from 1960-61 to 2014-15 very marginally the percentage of land under barren and unculturable waste land has reduced why however the pattern of net zone area varies greatly from one state to another it is over 80% of the total area in punjab and haryana and less than 10% in arunachal pradesh mizoram manipur and andaman nicobar islands forest area in our country is far lower than the desired 33% of geographical area as it was outlined in the national forest policy 1952 33% of the geographical area under forests is essential for maintenance of the ecological balance continuous use of land over a long period of time without taking appropriate measures to conserve and manage it has resulted in land degradation this in turn has serious repercussions on society and the environment land degradation and conservation measures we have shared our land with the past generations and will have to do so with the future generations too 95% of our basic needs for food shelter and clothing are obtained from land human activities have not only brought about degradation of land but have also aggravated the pace of natural forces to cause damage to land human activities such as deforestation overgrazing mining and quarrying to have contributed significantly in land degradation mining sites are abandoned after excavation work is complete leaving deep scars and traces of overburdening in states like jharkhand chatisgarh madhya pradesh and odisha deforestation due to mining have caused severe land degradation in states like gujarat rajasthan madhya pradesh and maharashtra overgrazing is one of the main reasons for land degradation in the states of punjab haryana western up over irrigation is responsible for land degradation due to water logging leading to increase in alkalinity and salinity of the soil the mineral processing like grinding of limestone for cement industry and calcite and soapstone for ceramic industry generate huge quantity of dust in the atmosphere it retards the process of infiltration of water into the soil after it settles down on the land in recent years industrial affluents as waste have become a major source of land and water pollution in many parts of the country now how to solve the problem of land degradation afforestation and proper management of grazing can help to some extent plantation of shelter beds of plants control on overgrazing stabilization of sand dunes by growing thorny bushes are some of the methods to check land degradation in arid areas proper management of wastelands 
control of mining activities proper discharge and disposal of industrial effluents and wastes after treatment can reduce land and water degradation in industrial and suburban areas now we will talk about the soil as a resource soil is the most important renewable natural resource it is the medium of plant growth and supports all types of living organisms on the earth the soil is a living system it takes millions of years to form soil up to a few centimeter in depth relief parent rock or bedrock climate vegetation and other forms of life and time are important factors in the formation of soil forces of nature like change in temperature actions of running water wind and glaciers activities of decomposers etc contribute to the formation of soil chemical and organic changes which take place in the soil are equally important soil also consists of organic and inorganic materials the organic material in the soil is called humus this is diagram of soil profile a soil profile is a vertical section of soil as shown in the diagram the first layer consists of unweathered parent bedrock the second layer is substratum consisting of weathered parent rock material then comes subsoil consisting of weathered rocks sand silt and clay these pieces get further broken down and form the upper top layer of the soil called top soil which is the upper soil layer on the basis of factors responsible for soil formation color thickness texture age chemical and physical properties the soils of india are classified in different types classification of soils india has varied relief features landforms climatic relevance and vegetation types these have contributed in the development of various types of soils the various types of soil found in india are alluvial soils black soil red and yellow soils laterite soil arid soils forest soils let's talk about alluvial soil first alluvial soil is the most widely spread and important soil the entire northern plains of india are made up of alluvial soil these soils have been deposited by three important himalayan river systems the indus the ganga and the brahmaputra these soils also extend in rajasthan and gujarat through a narrow corridor the eastern coastal plains particularly in the deltas of mahanadi godavari krishna and kaveri rivers the alluvial soils are found the alluvial soil consists of various proportions of sand silt and clay apart from the size of their grains soils are also described on the basis of their age on the basis of their age alluvial soils can be classified as old alluvial 
which is called bangar and the new alluvial which is called khadar the bangar soil has higher concentration of kankar nodules than the khadar it has most fine particles and is more fertile than the bangar soil alluvial soils as a whole are very fertile and the soils contain adequate proportion of potash phosphoric acid and lime which are ideal for the growth of sugarcane paddy wheat and other cereal and pulse crops due to its high fertility regions of alluvial soils are intensively cultivated and densely populated because people always like to live in the places which provide them means of livelihood soils in the drier areas are more alkaline and can be made productive after proper treatment and irrigation black soil these soils are black in color and are also known as regar soils black soil is ideal for growing cotton and is also known as black cotton soil it is believed that climatic condition along the parent rock material are important factors for the formation of black soil this type of soil is found in deccan trap region spread over northwest deccan plateau and is made up of lava flows the black soil covers the plateaus of maharashtra saurashtra malwa madhya pradesh and chatisgarh and also extend in the southeast direction along the godavari and the krishna valleys the black soils are made up of extremely fine clay material they are well known for their capacity to hold moisture the black soils are rich in soil nutrients like calcium carbonate magnesium potash and lime these soils are generally poor in phosphoric content the soil develops deep cracks during hot weather which helps in proper aeration of the soil the soils are sticky when wet and difficult to work on unless tilled immediately after the first shower or during the pre monsoon period red and yellow soils red soils develops on crystalline igneous rocks in areas of low rainfall in the eastern and southern part of the deccan plateau yellow and red soils are found in parts of odisha chatisgarh southern parts of the middle ganga plain and along the piedmont zone of the western ghats these soils develop a reddish color due to diffusion of iron in crystalline and metamorphic rocks laterite soil the laterite soil develops under tropical and subtropical climate with alternate wet and dry season this soil is the result of intense leaching due to heavy rain these soils occur mostly in southern states western ghats region of maharashtra odisha some parts of west bengal and north east regions where these soils support deciduous and evergreen forests laterite soil is 
humus rich but under sparse vegetation and in semi arid environment it is generally humus poor these soils are prone to erosion and degradation due to their position on the landscape but after appropriate soil conservation techniques this soil is useful for growing tea and coffee red laterite soils in tamil nadu andhra pradesh and kerala are more suitable for crops like cashew nut arid soils the lower horizons of the soil arid soils range from red to brown in color they are generally sandy in texture and saline in nature in some areas the salt content is very high and common salt is obtained by evaporating the water due to the dry climate high temperature evaporation is faster and the soil lacks humus and moisture the lower horizons of the soil are occupied by kankar because of the increasing calcium content downwards the kankar layer formation in the bottom horizons restrict the infiltration of water these soils are found in parts of western rajasthan after proper irrigation these soils become cultivable forest soils these soils are found in the hilly and mountainous areas where sufficient rain forests are available these soils texture varies according to the mountain environment where they are formed these soils are loamy and silty in valley sides and coarse grained in the upper slopes in the snow covered areas of himalayas these soils experience denudation and are acidic with low humus content these soils are found in the lower parts of the valleys particularly on the river terraces and alluvial fans are fertile soil erosion and soil conservation the denudation of the soil cover and subsequent washing down is described as soil erosion the process of soil formation and erosion go on simultaneously and generally there is a balance between the two but sometimes this balance is disturbed due to human activities like deforestation overgrazing construction and mining etc the natural forces like wind glacier and water also lead to soil erosion sometimes water flows as a sheet over large areas down a slope in such cases the top soil is washed away this is known as sheet erosion soil erosion is also caused due to defective methods of farming plowing the land in a wrong way that is up and down the slope form channels for the quick flow of water leading to soil erosion now let's talk about some of the steps that can be taken for soil conservation flowing along the contour lines can reduce the flow of water down the slopes this is called contour plowing steps can be cut out on the slopes making terraces terrace cultivation restricts soil erosion you must have seen in the hilly areas that terraces made by farmers on hill slopes western and central himalayas have well developed terrace farming 
स्ट्रिप फार्मिंग इज अनदर इफेक्टिव वे टू प्रिवेंट सॉइल इरोजन लार्ज फील्ड कैन बी डिवाइडेड इन टू स्ट्रिप स्ट्रिप्स ऑफ ग्रास आर लेफ्ट टू ग्रो बिटवीन द क्रॉप दिस ऑल्सो ब्रेक्स अप द फोर्स ऑफ द विंड एंड दिस मेथड इज नोन एज स्ट्रिप क्रॉपिंग प्लांटिंग लाइन्स ऑफ ट्रीज टू क्रिएट शेल्टर ऑल्सो वर्क इन अ सिमिलर वे रोज ऑफ सच ट्रीज आर कॉल्ड शेल्टर बेल्ट दीज शेल्टर बेल्ट हैव कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटेड सिग्निफिकेंटली to the stabilization of sand dunes and in stabilizing the desert in western india now let's try to do this you can see the names of different layers of soil profile we will place the name of layer at the right place in the diagram first of all unweathered parent bedrock after that is substratum consisting of weathered parent rock material the third layer is subsoil consisting of weathered rocks sand silt and clay and after that is the top soil one more exercise the given map show major soil types found in india we have to choose the name of the soil and place it on the map where it is found let's do it forest and mountainous soil alluvial soil red and yellow soil black soil arid soil today's task for you is in the map of india find out the states where alluvial soils are found and agriculture is the main occupation of people second question is how does regeneration of the environment benefit the people living in that area write your views on this till now we have covered land resource land degradation and conservation classification of soil soil erosion and soil conservation hope today's session has helped you to understand the importance of land and soil resources land degradation and soil erosion are posing a great threat to the existence the conservation of land and soil resources is our moral responsibility no government plans or policies can work if the citizens are not actively participating in it so it is our duty to protect our resources so that the needs of future generations can be also taken care of before we conclude this session i would like to give you a simple activity to perform make a list of all those resources that are being used at your home or at your school now try to find out how you can minimize the use of these resources or how you can use these resources economically i hope you will do it that's all for today be happy and take care of your health namaskar